Alright guys, so today we're reviewing Unit 12 for Chemistry, Nuclear, and this is the final unit, alright? So let's get right into it. Alright, so it says, a breeder reactor is one type of nuclear reactor. In a breeder reactor, uranium-238 is transformed in a series of nuclear reactions into plutonium-239. Uh, the plutonium-239 can undergo fission, as shown in the equation below. The X represents a missing product in the equation. Right, so the first question wants us to write a notation for the nuclide uh, represented by the missing product x in this equation. All right, so for all these fission reactions, there's going to be a balance of charge and mass. All right, so here we can see on the left side, we have a total mass of 240 and then a total charge of 94. And on the right side, we have a, so far, 94 plus 1. So we have a mass of 95 right now, but ultimately we need to balance the mass, so it's... 240 on the left side. Oops. So if it's 240 on the left side, we're going to subtract 95. And that gets us 144. So our mass is going to be 144. So for our final answer, we can write like one. Oops. This is not good at all. Let's write 144 over here. All right. Now for the bottom side, we have 36 on the right side and 94 on the left side. So that is a difference of 58. So we can write 58 on the bottom. So this 58 right here also represents the protons, all right? So because we know the number of protons, um, even though this may be an isotope of a element, then we can determine what that element is. In our case, that is going to be Ce. So there we go. And so that should be the nucleide, um, the missing product X in this equation. There we go. All right, number two, compare the amount of energy released by one mole of completely fission plutonium-239 to the amount of energy released by the complete combustion of one mole of methane. All right, so here's the thing, right? So combustion is a chemical, chemical uh, reaction or a chemical process, whereas fission is nuclear. And the thing is, nuclear reactions and processes release a lot more energy than chemical ones do, right? So like nuclear, think like atomic bombs, right? Just vast amount of energy, very unstable. And so in our case, it would be the uh, fission of plutonium. So fission does release greater amounts of energy. Uh, number three, based on table N, identify the decay mode of plutonium radioisotope produced in the breeder reactor. So pretty straightforward, just go to your reference table on reference table N. Um, so you won't find plutonium there, but you want to like read the question, right? So it, go, it says it goes from uranium-238 to plutonium-239. So what you want to do is just look for the decay mode of uranium-238, which in this case is alpha. So there we go. That's the alpha symbol. Our right, number four, determine the number of neutrons in an atom of the uranium isotope used in the breeder reactor. All right, so if we write out uranium, and I should just use another color for this, uranium, um, it's 238 for its mass, and then it has... 92 protons, or 92 protons. Well, pretty straightforward. We just find the difference between the mass and the protons, and we get the number of neutrons, which is 146. And so there we go. Boom. All right, number five. Complete the nuclear equation for the radioactive decay of tritium by writing a notation for the missing uh, part. So tritium is also known as hydrogen-3, all right? So hydrogen-3, good to know, they were listed right here. So balance of uh, mass and charge. So on the right, uh, sorry, on the left side, we have a mass of three. On the right side, it's zero because the electron is not non is neg negligible in mass. And so we know we have to write a three on the top, all right? On the bottom, we have a one on the left side and a negative one on the right side. And so to balance that out, we need a two. And so what has two protons? Well, that's going to be helium. So that is going to be that notation for that part. Boom. Number six, determine the fraction of the original sample of tritium that remains unchanged after 24.62 years. So this is a half-life uh, question, right? So first off, what is the half-life of tritium or hydrogen-3? Well, on the reference table, it states that the half-life is... 12.31 years. So that's just something to keep in mind here. Now, this says the fraction after 24.62 years. 
So this is the total amount of time that has elapsed, and this is the total half-life. And so each half-life, 50% of it decays. And so we have 24.62. And how many times does 12.31 go into 24.62? Two times. So that is two half-lives. That is very messy, but whatever. So two half-lives pass. All right, so let's write this out. Um, we want the total fraction. So we start off as one because that's just one whole. And after one half-life, it decays to one half, right? And then it decays one half again. So with one half of one half, well, one fourth. And so that is our fraction. And I did another way here, but um, both ways work. All right, moving on, number seven, determine the total amount of time that has elapsed when 12.5 grams of the original cobalt 60 sample at the hospital remains unchanged. So what is the original sample? Here. So it says the hospital keeps a 100 gram sample of cobalt 60. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So we start off with 100, right? It wants us to know the total amount of time that it will elapse when it reaches 12.5 grams. Okay, so 100 will decay to one half of 100 is 50, so that's one half life, and then it decays to 25, that's two half lives, and then it finally decays to 12.5. So, how many half lives is that? Let's count. So, this is one, two, three half lives. Okay. So, you have three half lives, right? So, what is the actual half life? Like the, the time that it takes to go through one half life for cobalt 60? Well, you can go on your reference table. And the reference table says, let's pull this out. Let's see. It says 5.271. All right. So, five. 5.271. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but whatever that is together should be the total amount of time that has elapsed. So 15.8 ish years. All right, number eight, complete the nuclear reaction below for the beta decay of cobalt 60 by running an isotopic notation for the missing product. All right, so very similar question like the ones we've done before. Left side is 60, right side is zero. So we need 60 on top. Okay. Uh, left side is 27, right side is negative, uh, negative 1, so we need 28. So what has 28 protons? Let's check. Uh, looks like nickel. All right, so nickel has 28 protons, and so that should be our notation for that question. But number 9, compare the penetrating power of the two emissions from cobalt 60. All right, so if we look above here, I wonder if the highlighter actually works. It says that the cobalt-60 is the artificially produced radioisotope that emits gamma rays and beta particles. Okay, wow, that actually looks very realistic on the paper, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so it emits uh, gamma rays and beta particles. So gamma rays have no charge, right? So when you put it through a magnetic field, it's just going to go past, whereas beta particles are negatively charged, and so they will actually get uh, deflected. And so here, gamma Gamma rays have a much stronger emission pen penetrating power. Um, so yeah, there we go. Number 10, state one risk to human tissue associated with the use of radio uh, isotopes to treat cancer. Um, well, here's the thing. It's, it's radioactive material, right? So, I mean, if you get inside your body, okay, it can kill the cancer cells, but it also poses a big risk to the healthy cells. So, yeah. Uh, Boom, there we go, it can be harmful to healthy cells. So that does it for the review of unit 12, and that concludes chemistry uh, regions, at least. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys learned something. If you did, make sure you subscribe, and thank you for watching.